Hi, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today I thought I would do a, another whimsical piece and do it with uh, goofy little frogs. I love goofy frogs. So I thought I'd share that with you today. So yeah, let's just get started. I'm going to use a micron pen to draw my frogs. And as you can see, I've sort of uh, done an initial drawing or else we'll be here forever watching me erase. <laughs> So I'll follow my initial drawing. So just a little bit of a hill there, ending up facing up a wee bit. And the top of the head, like this. And then bring it around from the bottom. Big eyes. And then the center of the eyes. Skinny neck. Just gives it more character. And then the body. Now, I have a space here because I have a little, uh, another little frog here. And this one's peeking from behind mom or dad, whatever this one is. And little fingers. Now we're going to draw. The mom or the dad, whatever this is, as I said. Okay. And this is probably sister. And her head's tilted a little bit. Her arm's coming behind her back. Put a little heart on her dress or shirt, whatever that is. And then probably impish little brother here. He's coming from outside of the picture. And we'll have him waving with this skinny little arm. Like that. Okay, now we can, I think this is probably, well, Let's be very traditional and make this mum. And this will be dad. I guess. Dad's got a striped shirt on today. And mum's got buttons I guess 
sister and brother's got a plain blue shirt, I think. Okay. Nope. Oh. I've got his pupils. So there we have it. That's our little family of frogs. Now what we're going to do is fill in the eyes. And just make these black. Now this takes a wee bit of practice, but it's pretty basic. Once you get the mouth down, or the, you know, the face, the head, then the rest is uh, a piece of cake. Okay, I'm going to fill those eyes in and then we'll come back. So I have all the eyes filled in. How cute are they? <laughs> I'm just going to come in with a white gel pen and bring in some indication of a you know the pupil, the light. This little one. <laughs> I'll tell you, whimsy should give you, should bring you joy. Okay, now we're going to get to the painting part. Now I'm just going to use a number five brush. And I think I'll start with, uh, well, let's do their skin. Now I'm going to start with some sap green and then I will come in with a bit of darker green, probably olive, to uh, do some shading. Okay. neck baby or toddler whatever he is or she is okay sister Sister's arms coming out of her dress, and then brother.
All right. Now I'm just going to come in with a bit of darker green to uh, create some indication of sh shadows. I want to get in there before this dries. I guess it's more than shadows, it's just accentuating especially at the top, I think. Just gives it a little more depth and all right, maybe a little bit on the neck. Okay, what we can do now is come in with our micron pen, or whatever pen you you can use an ultra fine tip sharpie. I have to fill in dead a little bit here. Um, yeah, whatever you have, and draw. Uh, I've already put some stripes on Dad's shirt, some buttons on Mum, a heart on. Sis, but I think I'll put a pattern on Sis just to break it up a little bit more. Sun's trying really hard to come out today. It's cold out though. It's only about minus four. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Um, I don't know, 28? I don't know, that's a guess. But it's windy. It's strong wind, so it feels like, you know, minus 10 or 12. I've been out already today, picked up some groceries and got some very precious gas, $140, $140, a liter. Very expensive. Okay, I'll leave the sleeves solid, I think. And then brother, give him a collar. But I think I'll leave that solid too. So we have pattern, solid, pattern, solid. Just for variety. Okay, let's come in with some paint. I'm thinking Dad needs a red and white striped shirt. Does he? Would Dad have a red and white striped shirt on? Who knows? Let's, let's go with blue and white. Okay. I'm going to start out with uh, cerulean blue. Yeah, so it's it's cold. But we had a snowstorm uh Friday night which was 
well, this won't be coming out the day I do it. So, to put it in perspective, that was uh, three days ago. Got like, I don't know, 45 centimeters of snow. We got a lot. And then it rained all night last night. So, um, all the areas that have been shoveled or plowed or snow blowed, snow blowed, <laughs> gone over with the snow, snow blower. Um, it's now down to the ground just about. I'm just giving it some dabs just to give uh, the idea of some, you know, some fabric, if you get what I mean. Anyway, so we're just about to the ground in that part, but we still have some um, snowdrifts. But I could go out my shoes. So that was cool. Okay, what color should mom's dress be? I'm thinking, let's pick something pretty. I was going to go with turquoise, but it's too close to this blue. Uh, let's make mom's dress yellow. And I'm going into my Daniel Smith, which is a really bright yellow. Some nice contrast here. Yeah, cold. But there's sort of, I don't know if you folks feel this, but when I've gone out for groceries or You know, if I have to go out to run errands or whatever it is, and I've been cold, it's such a treat to come home to a warm house, you know, to your warm home. It feels like you've, uh, whoops, <laughs> my paintbrush jumped right out of my hand. I don't know. It's like you've been out foraging <laughs> for food. <laughs> and the most foraging I did was <laughs> looking in the aisles for the best deals. <laughs> Sometimes I think of myself as, you know, this pioneer. Oh, nothing pioneer about me. Although I have lived in some conditions that most people haven't lived in. When I lived in uh, Africa... I lived in, you know, kind of a remote village in the northern part of Malawi. And we had, we had nothing there, actually. <laughs> there was a Scottish Pres Presbyterian church, or sorry, not church. Yeah, I think there was a church, but there was a school, a small school. That's about all we had. We had what they referred to as a market, which, you know, a market. It was an old wooden table that you would uh, bring your goat or whatever you have to market. We had market on, I think Wednesdays was market day. So if someone had a goat to slaughter, they would walk it to the market. I don't know that anybody, I think there were two cars in my village. What color should we do her dress? Let's let's bring some red in. Or we could make the heart red and bring huh. Let's do her heart. Yeah, so we had um about two maybe three vehicles in the village. 
sentía the pastor had a car and I think there was a teacher an expat and I think she had a car she'd been there for years I think I'm thinking of Mbulumbuzi or Mbamgweni uh, Mbamgweni I think and I think she'd been there like 12 years. And she had a car. And I was there with a program funded by CEDA, Canadian International Development Agency. So we had a Jeep and a driver because some of the areas, let's bring in some more blue, maybe a darker blue for brother's shirt. I'm going to go into cobalt blue. So yeah, some of the homes, the host families lived, you know, quite within the woods in the jungle sort of area. So I wouldn't be able to maneuver a Jeep over. I mean, there were most of these homes had no roads to them. They were like big pathways. So you needed a good driver that knew what he was doing. So, yeah, I don't know why I started this conversation. <laughs> I can't remember what my point was. Oh, about going out in the cold and then foraging, foraging. And the living conditions, yeah, I loved it there. I mean, this is one of the poorest countries in the world. And the people were wonderful. Um, you know, they really took care of each other. We pull up in the Jeep to uh, check on our participants in the program, which were young adults. And, uh, you know, the host mother would bring out a tin plate with a mango on it if they had a mango tree in their yard or you know a piece of roasted corn just very generous very warm wonderful people so and they know how to be a family we could learn a lot from them we as in I don't know Canadians Westerners I'm going to make this a little bit sort of an orange color I think I'll come in with some darker with this. So yeah, the conditions were, were rough. Rough for me as a Canadian, not used to it. We uh, had no electricity, no running water. The diet was extremely limited because the soil wasn't good. So there was only so much that could be, you know, the people could grow there. I always walked around with these little guavas. I would find wild guava trees and walk around with these guavas about this big in my pocket. Okay, I'm not crazy about that color. I think I'll come in with something else. Hmm, what will I come in with? Maybe, hmm. let's add a bit of a, what have we got here? It's a light red, more like a brown than a red. So yeah, going to the bathroom meant going into this, it wasn't a bathroom. It was the uh, size of a closet. 
and it was cement made of cement and it was basically four walls no no roof and a hole cut in cement on the ground and yeah you just squat down and do your thing no water take a bathe with one bucket of water and a plastic cup it gets the job done i'll tell you we waste so much water and i think canadians waste the most water in the world sad to say just trying to decide what color i want to do these buttons and i think i will go with uh purple why not so yeah one bucket of water wash my hair and my body with one bucket of water doable well, doable, I did it. Yeah, I, uh, I got very ill. Very ill. According to the doctor, I had typhoid fever and malaria at the same time. Nothing like doing it. And, you know, if you're going to be sick, you may as well make it go for the gusto, eh? And I think, let's go wild here and give her collar, make her collar pink. So, yeah, I was in the hospital for some time. And still very sick for some time after I got out of the hospital so I was taken care of by my boss and his partner I lost 26 pounds that's another whole story in itself that was quite the experience. And then I went back the next year. <laughs> I loved it there. And then I went back on my own, backpacking around. I think that was when I was about 45. I took what would be the equivalent of a, uh, a school bag. You know, a school, what are they called? Not backpacks. I guess they're backpacks, but the little school backpacks. That's what I took, and I went to Malawi for six weeks, and it was fine. That was enough. I just washed them out by hand and laid them over bushes to dry. I'm going to bring a little bit more red in here. So, yeah. Maybe put... That's his neck, so we need to come in with some green there. So yeah, I wouldn't have given up those experiences. Then I did a program in Jamaica and started a Pakistan program. It was wonderful. Wonderful program that I work for, wonderful organization, a nonprofit. Okay. I think our little uh, people are done. Now I'm going to dry that and then we'll come back and figure out what we want to do in the background. So this is dry now. I think I will uh, bring in my micron pen again and accentuate my lines.
Yeah, I'd love to hear from anybody that has, you know, a similar experience as I had, whether it be Africa or some other wonderful continent. I hope my little stories don't bore you. Sometimes I just drift off. My thoughts get carried away. I just think these frogs are so cute, <laughs> so goofy. Now I'm guessing if you're in here, it's because you like this sort of thing. I'd love to hear from you about if you would like me to do more, more, you know, these simpler, cute little uh, whimsical pieces or just the simple more more simple watercolors. Now I'll always continue to do some alcohol ink and you know some watercolors that are a little more a little more advanced. But yeah, I'd be interested to know if uh, if this. Is what turns your crank, <laughs> as the saying goes. I just know when I go into the different groups, there's a lot of people that have a lot of be good beginner questions. So it uh, gives me the impression that there are a lot of uh, people out there that have, that are and have taken up watercolors or painting. In general um, you know that's an ongoing thing I think the pandemic brought forth more people that would have uh, picked up this sort of hobby that's just my guess Okay, now can we add something else to bring these little characters out? I think we need to put some flowers or something in here. That's going to make it a little more busy, but it will fill in our background here somewhat. Just some really simple flowers. Stem here. Maybe a flower coming here. Uh, one coming from here. And another one here. Okay. Yeah, that fills it in. Somewhat. Uh, okay. So let's color those. Color them. Let's paint those. Now 
being fussy. Just come in with some color. Nice, uh, let's make a purple flower. Let's mix it with the blue. <laughs> it was there. Why not? It makes a pretty color. Okay. Another purple one here, I think. And what shall we do here? How about a red, a lesser in crimson? And hmm. Oops, I have this pretty color here. Let's use this here. And here. Now, do we need to do any more pencil pen marks? You know, some, any more uh, work on our, let's give brother a polka dotted shirt, just because it will add a little more interest. I think we might be done. Oh, I want to add some black to the center of these flowers. Now, you could have, or I could have, we could have, put some blue in the background, made some clouds, so they'd be outside. We could have drawn in some little triangles or something. Let's get a little more whimsical with these flowers. There we go. I think we're done. I think I want to add a little bit more yellow on Mum's dress. Just because it feels not quite rich enough. Just a little bit like that. A little more of the orange for Sissy's dress. Yeah, I think we're done. That's fun. I hope you enjoyed that. You know the routine. Um, 
always look forward to a like. Look forward to hearing from you with uh, any comments you want to make. Yeah. Share if you will. And you folks have an absolutely fabulous day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.